Today, a new accuser of Harvey Weinstein is speaking out about the sexual harassment that she alleges that she endured as a young actress and screenwriter who, at the request of Mr. Weinstein, was simply pitching her screenplay to him at the Sundance Film Festival. Louisette Geis worked in the film and music industry for over 20 years. Following her dream, she made a point to graduate early and with honors so that she could move to Los Angeles and start her career. Education was key to Louisette, and she studied with the top teachers in film for acting, writing, and directing, which led her to land several roles fairly early on The Drew Carey Show, Two and a Half Men, and King of Queens, to name just a few. She was also a dedicated screenwriter and went on to sing on many national commercials and owned an award-winning music company. Louisette had her second baby girl only six weeks ago. She is a mother of two young girls. She was a guardian to a young girl and she's a stepmom to two boys. She made an abrupt departure from the film industry in 2009 and now works in real estate. She is speaking out today because even though Harvey Weinstein has been terminated from his employment with the Weinstein Company, she and I both feel that there has not yet been justice for many women who allege that they were victims of sexual harassment. Although there are reports that Mr. Weinstein entered into settlements with eight women who allege that they were sexually harassed by Mr. Weinstein, many more women who alleged that they were victims never filed claims or lawsuits against him. Many of these women feared the power that, Henry, that Mr. Weinstein had and were concerned that if they took legal action or spoke out that he could ruin their careers. In addition, many believed that nobody would believe them. A number of accusers have contacted me about their allegations, but I've had to inform them that the statute of limitations that arbitrary time period set by law has expired and is therefore too late for them to assert a legal claim. Mr. Weinstein could, however, decide that he would like to resolve these allegations and waive and agree not to assert the statute of limitations. That is exactly what we believe that he should do. Mr. Weinstein may believe that some of these claims are false, or he may believe that some are true. He may believe that he has not had his day in court on these allegations and that he has not been treated fairly. Many women who allege that they are his victims feel the same way. I believe that there is a way to provide justice for these alleged victims and for Mr. Weinstein. I am inviting him to agree to engage in an arbitration of these claims with these alleged victims and with an agreed upon retired judge. The women could present their claims of sexual harassment and Mr. Weinstein can present his defense. If the judge finds in favor of the victims, the judge could award damages according to proof at trial. If Mr. Weinstein prevails, he would be able to announce the result to the public. In the alternative, he could also agree to a confidential mediation. This is a process to resolve these claims. This proposal is similar to what I suggested to Bill Cosby. He was not wise enough, however, to accept my invitation to resolve the allegations against him. Will Mr. Weinstein accept the offer of a process that is fair to him and will help to provide a system of justice to his accusers? We will have to wait and see. I believe that one day Mr. Weinstein will wish to return as a producer in Hollywood. This is a positive step that he could take to help to restore his battered reputation. It is not enough for him to acknowledge pain that he has caused and to seek therapy. He needs to go further and provide justice to these women who allege that they are his victims. Louisette Geis is very brave in her decision to speak out today. She has decided to share what she alleges was her experience because she knows that there are many others who still live in fear and who do not yet have a voice. She's doing this for them.
and for her daughters. I am honored to represent her and look forward to Mr. Weinstein's response. And now I'd like to present Louisette Geis. Why'd you change? I first met Harvey Weinstein at the Cannes Film Festival. I next saw him at the Sundance Film Festival in 2008. He invited me to his premiere of Where in the World is Osama Bin Laden. After the premiere, he asked me about my music company and the, the script that I had written and was pitching at the festival. We agreed to meet at the hotel restaurant we were, where we both were staying. When we arrived, we were asked to leave shortly after at the restaurant as they were closing. Harvey then offered to reconvene the meeting in his office, which was adjacent to his hotel room. Obviously, I was hesitant. I had heard some stories previously about Harvey's behavior with women. So, there was a hotel security camera right above us, and I said to him, I will take this meeting with you if you will shake my hand that you will not touch me. And he shook my hand and kind of laughed it off. We went to his office and we had a great conversation about his current film and the film that I was pitching. He seemed genuinely interested and I was excited. After about 30 minutes, he asked to excuse himself and go to the bathroom. He returned in nothing but a robe with the front open and he was buck naked. He told me to keep talking about my film and that he was gonna hop into his hot tub that was adjacent to the room, just steps away. When I finished my pitch, I was obviously nervous and he just kept asking me to watch him masturbate. I told him I was leaving. He quickly got it out of the tub and grabbed my forearm as I was trying to grab my purse and he led me to his bathroom pleading that I just watch him masturbate. My heart was racing and I was very scared. I pulled my arm away finally and headed to the door. He started following me and telling me that he could introduce me to Bob Weinstein and that I could get a three picture deal and that he would green light my script. But I had to watch him masturbate. I was on the ver verge of tears, but I pulled it together and quickly exited. I told my sister and I told a good friend of mine immediately after. And over the years when people asked me why I got out of the movie industry, I would tell them this story. Even though my parents raised me to be a strong and independent woman, I never ever ever thought that I would have any chance to stand up for myself against Harvey Weinstein. I knew if I said anything that he would have a ton of lawyers on my, on my back and no one would trust me over him. I know I'm not special. I know that this has happened to many women and it's the fear and pain of sexual harassment that is released on one's mind, body and soul that I'm trying to stop. Sexual harassment has become commonplace in the entertainment industry and to be fair, most women that I know have a story about being sexually harassed or abused in this business. I am only now feeling confident enough to come forward. I know that Harvey has been fired, and I know that he said he needs help. But he's also saying that he wants to sue the New York Times for defamation, and that he's pleading with the Hollywood elite to give him a second chance. He's breeding doubt about our stories, that women are just making this up. And he's making light of it by saying that this is such a good story, he wants to buy the movie rights. I do not think that Harvey Weinstein understands or comprehends how much pain and suffering this brings to me and scores of other women. The window to end this soul-crushing behavior of sexually harassing women is only now just recently opened. I think that we can all feel that we're really on the precipice of empowerment here and a journey of revolution. I implore, implore other women to please stand up and to come forward. 
I know there's many women who have experienced just what I've experienced. Let us be the change we want to see in this world. Let's stop talking about making a change and actually make a change. Let's tuck our babies in tonight and know that we did everything that we can for them to make this world a better place. When I think of my mom, who has many a story like this, and Gloria, and the countless other women who've traveled the road less traveled to help me rise up and be a confident mom and professional, I'm really humbled by their experiences and their courage. Sexual harassment in the enter entertainment industry needs to stop, and it needs to stop now. Okay, I'll be happy to take some questions. Louisette is not going to be taking questions right now. Well, what year did this happen? 2008. 2008. What's the uh, statute of limitations? The statute of limitations in Utah, which is where it happened, according to uh, Louisette, is four years and so that statute of limitations has expired what are you hoping for i mean uh, what do you are you have you been contacted by other women as well yes how many uh i'm not going to do a count but it's some of them are also in other areas of the country and so therefore, we're not able to be here today. Are these in addition to the ones already named by the New York Times? And the New York yes. Times? Gloria, in your career, have you been hearing about rumors in Barbie for a while? I imagine that people have been coming to you uh, throughout the years. <clears throat> Is allegations new to you? No. Why not come forward sooner with any other clients in the past? I have no comment on that question. What would it take to see from Harvey to accept uh, preparing his reputation? What are you hoping to get from Harvey out of this? Justice. Did you I, I mean, there has been quite a bit of focus on him, and that's fine. But what about the persons who allege that they are victims who are not A-list stars? And in some cases, some people have contacted me, we're not actresses. But that's all I'll say. I'm not going to identify them further. Um, you have mentioned that you were advising or hoping that John Hardy Wednesday would perhaps get involved in some confidential mediation. I, I, I'm suggesting the process of a confidential mediation, which is essentially a settlement process where we could also have a retired judge or a professional mediator. Or in addition to that, or rather instead of that, there could be an arbitration. Both of those are what we call alternative dispute resolution processes, and arbitration is a trial. The mediation is a is essentially a negotiating session to attempt to reach a settlement. But an arbitration is an actual trial by a retired judge. That could happen much sooner than if a lawsuit were filed and then had to wait in line perhaps for years in order to be tried. Do you currently have and in pardon me? I was gonna say, do you currently have any lawsuits? Pending against pending. Mr. Weinstein? Correct. No. Harvey is protected by the statute of limitations. Why would he give up that to go into arbitration? The question is if Mr. Weinstein is currently able to assert at what we call an affirmative defense of the statute of limitations, in other words, that it's too late, 
then why would he enter into a mediation process or an arbitration process? And the answer is very simple. That if, if as and when he chooses to allow a process where there can be justice for him and for persons who allege they are victims, I think that will go a long way to helping to restore his reputation. So I find that to be in his own self-interest for the future, and in addition, in the interest of persons who allege they are victims, because it would be due process for both. In other words, both or all would testify under oath, present their evidence, present he could present his defenses, and then a neutral person, namely a retired judge, could make a decision. And if he is found not to be liable for the allegations that any alleged victim or victims make against him, we are suggesting that we would be agreeable to his having that decision announced to the press. So it gives him a day in court. It gives them a day in court. It gives an opportunity for there to be justice and for people, all of them, to testify under oath, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help them God. And I think that would be a fair process. Why would he do it? Because I think he wants to work in this town again. And I think that that is an invitation to help. It's not instead of therapy. It's in addition to. And in the event that he were able to, or decided to, after consultation with his lawyers, accept our invitation to do that, then I feel that those alleged victims who have contacted me would feel much better about Mr. Weinstein. Justice for the victims look like in this case? Justice for the victims would be for them to be able to have a fair process, such as I described, in order for a neutral person, a retired judge, to decide their claims. And of course, then if the judge decides in their favor, then they could receive compensation according to proof of trial for whatever damages they can prove, which might include a need for therapy bills, medical bills, if they would be able to present any evidence of physical injuries, uh, compensation for their pain and suffering. These would be possible remedies. But of course, if they don't have sufficient evidence that, and cannot prove their allegations by a preponderance of the evidence, which is the standard, for a civil case, then they will not prevail. So it seems fair, it seems just, and I think it's overdue. Do you think Ms. Guys has the evidence? Pardon me? Do you, does, does your client have the evidence to prove? She has evidence that she is looking forward to being able to present to a judge in this process. And we're not going to detail what that is. But it's in addition to the people that she told, which would um, corroborate her contemporaneous uh, report that, in fact, he had done what she alleged. But we have evidence beyond that, which we're not willing to disclose at this point, but we would present in an arbitration process. Ms. Albright, did you have any conversations with your daughter before she removed herself from an advisory role? In no. In case She's in a separate law firm. She makes her own decisions, and I'm very proud of her, and I love her and respect her, as I've said. She doesn't decide who I represent. I don't decide who she represents or if, as, and when anybody should discontinue representation of any client. We're completely separate firms. Are you indeed believed that, you know, you would be forced into this? I'm sorry, I can't hear your question. I'm sorry, are you at least relieved that you're not going to be in a scenario where you may end up 
on different sides? Actually, no, it, because she informed me that she was never retained to represent him in any uh, process involving any claim against him. What do you think of emails that came out regarding your daughter suggesting a defense, you know, showing Harvey with some of the alleged accusers and friendly positions? Yeah, I don't have any comment on anything that she has said because our focus today is for victims or persons who allege they are victims and what Mr. Weinstein can do that could result in a positive outcome. That's that's our focus. Yes. If Mr. Weinstein doesn't take you up on your invitation, what's your next course of action? We'll have to wait and see. In a, in a case like this, you obviously can go after Harvey. Can you go after the company as well? Uh, we don't have any comment on whether we would or could go after the Weinstein company. What do you think of Angelina Jolie and Gwyneth Paltrow coming out today? Why do you think they stayed silent for so long? I don't know what Gwyneth Paltrow and Angelina Jolie knew and when they knew it. So I don't have any comment on why they stayed silent or if they stayed silent and why they are coming out now. But I do think that it's important and I'm glad that they have both made statements about this and I'm glad that Meryl Streep did and Judy Dench and anyone else because women's voices matter. Women are now empowered, you know, and the casting couch scenario is just going to have to end because otherwise there are going to be serious consequences. As there are right now for Mr. Weinstein. It's just not acceptable anymore. It's not going to be tolerated. And, you know, women are not going to be silenced anymore. Your client, before uh, she met with him in the hotel room, it sounds like she, she knew, she was very, very aware of what could possibly happen by shaking his hand in front of a camera, promise, making him promise. I mean, how, it seemed like she was very confident that it was going to happen. How, how did how did she know that? I mean, how talked about is, is Harvey's antics in Hollywood for her to know to go that far uh, to make sure that that wouldn't happen? Yeah, what? she didn't know that it would happen, but of course she had heard rumors, and this is why she wanted to be clear with him that this is not something she was going to tolerate. And she did make that clear. And that's why she did it in front of a camera. Did anyone then come forward about any other producers, not naming any specifics, but that you know of? That seems like a common problem in Hollywood. I don't have any comment right now about whether any other persons have contacted me about their accusations against anyone else in Hollywood. Let's just put it this way. That wouldn't be a surprise to me. And I'm contacted by many people about many issues. Do you have the camera footage that you're alleging? We're not going to uh, comment on what specific evidence we would present if, as and when, Mr. Weinstein did accept our invitation to enter into a process which could lead to justice or as much justice as is possible under the circumstances. Did your client ever hear or see Harvey Weinstein again after that uh, night? Uh, we will answer that question at another point. Because he has a history of following up with his victims, trying to buy them gifts, buy his way out of it. That, that has not, did that happen with your client at all? There were no gifts. We're, we're talking about the statute of limitations, getting justice. There was a case two years ago in a dying model in New York. She did go to the police. She was, you know, reported with him. The reporting was published today by the New Yorker. Can you talk at all about that case and the DA in New York declined to prosecute? What are your thoughts after listening to that reporting? I, I've heard about that story. and. I don't have any comment on the New York DA declining to prosecute because I don't know what evidence the DA had 
at that time. Also, the burden in a criminal case is up here, beyond a reasonable doubt. The burden in a civil case is down here by preponderance of the evidence, or for punitive damages somewhere in between, which would be by clear and convincing evidence. So I don't know what the DA had at that time, or what her allegations and evidence were. So I really, I can't comment on that. Well, are you aware of other allegations from potential clients or otherwise that do fall within the statute of limitations and thus uh, that he could be liable for? I can't comment on that at this time. But in the event that Mr. Weinstein's lawyers contact me, I'd be happy to discuss that with them. Victoria, is there any outcome in which uh, you feel brings justice to the victims that addresses it in a more systemic way? I mean, there's a lot of reports about this, you know, the number of people involved in perhaps procuring uh, women for, for Harvey. Is there anything that you think could address it in a more systemic way? Well, I mean, I think the press is doing a very good job uh, in uh, locating and discovering uh, in their investigation many facts. I don't know whether all those facts are true or not. Having said that, I think, I mean, there are many accusers who do not wish to be public. That's one of the reasons that Louisette is speaking out today because she's doing this also for them. And in a mediation or arbitration process, of course their names would be provided to Mr. Weinstein, but they would not need to be made public. And so this would protect them if they do not wish to disclose their names to the public or speak out. And also, they would have access to justice through a system which could provide that to them, which I think is important. If they accept your offer, would this open the process to other alleged victims and their attorneys possibly to work through it as well with you? We'd be open to that, assuming Mr. Weinstein and his attorneys were open to that. In other words, we could work towards a global resolution of these allegations. What about um, Harvey's wife? How do you feel about the position that she's in now, and if any of your clients ever tried to communicate with her? I don't have any comment about his wife. I mean, she can make a comment about what she knows or doesn't know or did know or didn't know if she chooses to, but I mean, I always feel that marriages are very complicated relationships, and our focus is on Mr. Weinstein and not on his wife. Gloria, do you believe Mr. Weinstein is the tip of the iceberg and that there will be other powerful uh, people in Hollywood uh, exposed, exposed in this way? That's possible. I mean, the days of sense of entitlement, arrogance of power, my girl, I can take advantage of anyone seeking employment or attempting to retain the employment they have or being in fear of suffering some negative imp job impact because they decline sexual advances. I mean, those days are at an end. In terms of women knowing that they have rights, and they can assert those rights. So I would say if there are any high profile employers or executives who are still sexually harassing women or men, then they should understand they're acting at their peril and they're taking an enormous risk. But some people who do that are risk takers. But the old adage of never underestimate a woman could never be truer than it is today, especially if that woman is someone seeking employment or seeking to retain their employment. Because there are many lawyers who will help them and advise them in reference to what they can do 
if they are sexually harassed on the job. So, we, anything else you'd like to say? Any, anything further? And then we'll go. <clears throat> Thank you very much for coming. And uh, I know some of you have emailed, and I will respond to those emails. She's not going to do any interviews right now after this press conference, but thank you. Just for background, oh, this is for background on the statute of limitations waiver okay, issues, so you understand okay. that. It's not a bar. The statute, the civil statute of limitations yeah. is not a bar. Criminal statute of limitations bars. You're beyond you can't file, the DA can't file. Civil statute of limitations is waivable. So if the defense either doesn't assert it in their in their papers of responding or 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 decides not to waive it, the case goes forward. It's not a bar. Never for any civil statute limitation. So it can be waived. In a civil case, there's actually one state in which that I know of that could also be waived in a criminal case, but yeah. without getting into that. This is Michael Morocco, my law partner of almost 42 years, and Michael uh, has also been an arbitrator, and he has been a mediator, so he is, you don't have to be a judge to be an arbitrator, but he has been a, a professional arbitrator as well as someone who litigates sexual